C3. Welcome to the Critical Decentralization Cluster, spelled with an S, not a Z. Decentralization. Because we are in Europe. For those of you who were here last year, you know that we were also here last year. And for those of you in other clusters who had to listen to me last year, here I am again for you to listen to me. My name is Diego Salazar. I'm going to be the MC for this stage. We've got a lot of great content coming up. We're going to be covering everything from open hardware, um, FOSS in Asia, just a bunch of really neat stuff, uh, cryptocurrencies. Um, this cluster is sponsored by Riot and Riot and Monero. Oh, look, they're, they're giving me a thing. Huh. Not yet. Dude, you shouldn't be looking at that stuff here. Just kidding. So... For those of you who are interested in what we have to offer, you can go to Decentral.community. Yes, .community is a TLD now. You can go to Decentral.community. We have all sorts of resources up there for you. Um, our schedule, if you, we've got a, a thing. It says schedule. It's kind of hard to miss in the navigation. If you click on schedule, you can see everything we got going on. We've got things. We've got workshops. We've got talks here on the stage. Um, FOSS Asia over there is going to be running workshops periodically. You can check in with them. They've got some really cool stuff to show. Um, we're going to take this time at the beginning of our um, cluster stage period, I guess, to introduce all of the projects that are here with us. We have several of them, and we'd like for you to meet them all. They're going to come up here and one by one. They're going to say who they are, what they do, what their mission is, you know, what you, what you can expect from them over these next three days. Uh, we hope that you guys come back and visit us. If any of our talks or content interests you, uh, we've, we've always got people over here to talk to. If you have any questions about anything that you hear on the stage or anything that you want to talk about in terms of cryptocurrencies, Monero, um, we've also got coffee back there um, from the Parallel Polis people, and they're going to tell you all about that but you know it is perpetually one in the morning in here if you if you know there is no sun so <laughs> the, the coffee is uh, is good to to help keep you going um let's see all right i've been on for two minutes and i have 15 minutes for this kind of opening introduction I, I know i keep making this joke for any of you who've seen me on on stage before they always give me way too much time for this introduction so actually i'm going to go ahead and move into the next portion which is talking about monero i am also a part of monero the monero community and um while i do have a couple of presentations particularly on Tomorrow, I'm going to be talking about FOSS and different funding models. But then the next day after that, I'm going to be giving a presentation about Monero, how it works, kind of the underlying stuff of blockchain, uh, where Monero fits into all of this. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know uh, just a little bit briefly what Monero is, why we are here, particularly why we are here in C3, what the Monero community believes in. Believe it or not, this entire cluster, all of the, uh, the decorations that have been put up, uh, all the people, some of the people that have been flown out here, um, this was all funded by the Monero community. So Monero, for those of you who don't know, is a cryptocurrency. It's similar to Bitcoin, except it's private by default and mandatory. Um, Bitcoin is not. Bitcoin is traceable. Um, and Monero, unlike many other cryptocurrencies, did not have an ICO, did not have a pre-mine, did not have any of the stuff that a lot of these other coins have had. Um, and it's because of this lack of kind of this commercial nature that C3 is actually, we're, we're pretty much the only cryptocurrency that is here at C3 um, because we, we are really definitely in that whole grassroots area, you know, non-commercial type thing. So whenever we need to fund something like all of this that you see here, we have a crowdfunding platform of our own, similar to Kickstarter, I guess, you know, it's called the CCS, the Community Crowdfunding uh, System. And... Basically, the Riot guys, they put together, like, we need all of this for the stage. You know, we need to pay these people. We need to get these supplies. And the Monero community funded this whole thing. It was, it was a lot of money, and everybody donated a lot of money and a lot of time. And you're going to hear more um, when Matthias comes up here and talks about Riot, about just what was done to make this kind of all come together. It's, it's really fascinating. We are thrilled to be back. Last year was a blast. Were any of you guys here last year? Were any of you guys in this cluster last year checking us out? No? None, none of you guys came? That's okay. We, we still love you, and we hope that you'll enjoy your time here. Um, we, we now have another stage to compete with. 
So uh, we may get a, a dancing clown over here or something to, to kind of bring people from over there. They seem very engaged. They seem a lot more engaged than you guys seem engaged. So <laughs> I think I got to step up my game over here. They're looking very intensely. Um, anyway, we're, yeah, we're thrilled that C3 had us back. We've got a lot of new great content this year. Oh, no, he's K. He's telling me, go back in, Diego, go into the light. Go into the light. Um, kind of lost my train of thought over here. So <clears throat> content. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, we've got a lot of great content. Once again, please, please go to the website. Um, all of our schedule is there, and there's links in particular. To, so if you want to learn any more about anything that is on the schedule, there's links that take you to kind of not just uh, kind of, excuse me. I am very jet lagged, by the way. <laughs> I am so tired. Uh, tomorrow, this is my second day. Uh, here in Leipzig, I'm in for the United States. Tomorrow will be a much better day, and I will, if all of my jokes fall flat today, please, let's just attribute it not to my lack of a sense, my, my lack of a sense of humor, but to the fact that I'm very, very tired. Um, but I love you all so much that I'm here anyway, just for you, when I could be back at my hotel room sleeping. Or, you know, they have hammocks. They were just telling me that they have hammocks over there where I can go sleep. Does anybody have a hammock? Can you share? Um, so... Um, I am going to go ahead and get off this stage, and I'm going to invite Matthias up here. We're already way ahead of schedule, but that's a good problem to have instead of to be behind schedule. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to invite Matthias up here to talk about Riot. Oh, no, he's, 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 he's doing a thing. All right, you know, I just got to keep doing that. I'm so sorry, guys. I know. I know you came here for quality content, and instead you're getting Diego rambling about things, <laughs> trying to stall for time as we get a few things done. They were like, Diego, you're supposed to be on here for, for 15 minutes for the introduction, for 15 minutes for Monero, and guess what, guys? It's 5.07. <laughs> so, so I'm already in trouble. It's just there's not much, there's not much to say about, about Monero. It's, it's really boring. Um, you know, Ethereum's claim to fame is like, it's we're the world computer, and Bitcoin's like, we're the first cryptocurrency. And Monero's like, yeah, we're just, we're like Bitcoin, but we're private. And when, whenever we make new technology that comes out, it's like, oh, that's cool. What, what does it do? It makes Monero more private. Not, it's not, it, it's, 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 like the, it's like plumbing, you know? Every house needs plumbing. If you don't have plumbing, like you're, ha well, you're not going to use this house very often, or you're going to go someplace else because eventually you're going to need plumbing. But it's not, it's not the cool thing about your house, right? When you, when you, when you bring new people into your house, you're like, look at this, look at this mantelpiece, look at this fireplace I got built, look at my kitchen and this big refrigerator I have. You don't go, look at this plumbing. I mean, you can't, you can't see it, most of it, but like. It's there, and it's exquisite, right? That's like what Monero is to society, because we believe in privacy. We believe everybody has a right to privacy. And <clears throat> with the particular audience that comes to C3, I don't think I have to do much convincing to you guys that privacy is important. Um, open source software is important, right? And so Monero, we, we really lean into that, but we really lean into the foundations and the basics of it. And it's not, it's, it's, it just doesn't have this big shine which is very, very unfortunate because I think personally that something like Monero or privacy, you know, by default and mandatory, not just in our finances, but in a lot of the other areas of our lives, such as, you know, what we put onto our computers, who we let into our homes, who listens to us on a day to day basis via the electronic devices that we carry around all the time. Like these are all important things that people need to think about. These are all things that people need to consider. And uh, something like Monero gives people that option. So uh, once again, come to my talk. Monero for scrubs on day three. This is day one. Yesterday was like day zero. Is day one always kind of semi-dead? Because people are kind of setting up. Day two is like kind of kind of busy. Last year it was. And then day two was a lot of hustle and bustle. Day one's kind of it's kind of all right. It's kind of okay. Um, for me, C three doesn't even start until I'm on stage. So you know, what do I know? Okay, let's take audience questions now while we're still stalling for time. Who, who's, who's out? You, you there. You there. Yes. Yes. Uh, how? how <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's, it's you. You want to come up on stage with me? No? Yes. Okay. That's, that's totally fine. You broke my heart just now, but it's totally fine. Thank you for this opportunity for audience questions. And now that, that, that segment is over as soon as it began. So, um, 
I think I will stop rambling at this point. Uh, I think I will... When they're... Re- oh, oh we, wait, guys, we do have an audience question. Okay. Ooh. Okay, you know, you know, that's a good question. It's not something I'm going to cover in my talk because it's a little, more, little bit more advanced. So I'll actually go ahead and cover it here. For those who didn't hear the question, he said he read the crypto note paper. He's just trying to flex on all of us. He's like, you know, I read, I read like academic papers and stuff. You know, <laughs> he's like, I read the crypto note paper, and my question was, you know, how does the privacy of something like Monero compare to the privacy of something like Zcash? So that sounds like something interesting to explore. That'll kill a bunch of time. So I'm all for it. So. Monero versus Zcash, we get this kind of question a lot, and it's not just versus Zcash. People will say, well, what? how does Monero compare to something like ZeroCoin? How does Monero compare to something like Verge? Or all these other coins that, that claim privacy in various different ways. So as I think many of us here know, there's many ways to achieve privacy. First of all, okay, first of all, let me back up all the way to, to the foundation of this. Step zero, foundation is really, no, not foundation. Privacy is really, really, really hard. It's really hard to get right. It's really difficult to minimize all the metadata leakage. It's so difficult. And if you mess up, if you mess up just once, you can really ruin it for yourself. Privacy is all about revealing what you want, when you want, and to who you want. And I will answer your question. I'm not just kind of <laughs> circling around because I don't know, okay? Um, th- these are all very important uh, things to think about because really what privacy at, is at its root is it's um, blocking metadata leakage. It's blocking things getting out about you that you don't want to get out, right? And there's various ways that people do this. Some people, um, in terms of cryptocurrencies, um, they try to do this kind of in an opt-in method where okay, most transactions are private and you can kind of opt into, you can turn on the privacy technologies. Some, they say, you know what, we don't want to mess with this at all. And like Bitcoin, they, they they kind of try to do this on a second layer, on the base layer of Bitcoin. There's no privacy, but if you jump up to something like Lightning, you know, you can kind of go into that. Or if you use kind of a third party tool like Wasabi or Samurai Wallet or, or some sort of mixing service, then you can kind of uh, try to increase your privacy that way. Uh, whereas something like Monero says, no, 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 privacy doesn't work that way. It's all, or, it, 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 we, we view of it, we view it much more extremely. It's kind of all or nothing. And the way that I like to talk about it um, is it's similar to driving. Okay. You could be the best driver in the world. You could be the safest driver in the world, but it's not you that you have to worry about. When you get behind the wheel and you start driving around your city, it's not you you have to worry about. It's everybody else. Because even if you're the safest driver, all it takes is one drunk driver to hit you and kill you. Right? Privacy is the same way. Privacy graphs, you know, being able to kind of link people to each other or link transactions to each other. You could do everything perfectly, take all the right steps. And like if you're trying to remain private in Bitcoin, there is a lot of steps to remaining private in Bitcoin. Like you can't reuse addresses you, and you can't consolidate your transactions after the fact. La, 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 the list goes on and on. You can look those up for yourself. You can do all of this 100% perfectly. But then if you transact with somebody that is not doing this well, this is the drunk driver that's going to hit you. This is the person that you're, not, that, that you're not aware of that is not doing things well. And now this person is linked to you and all that work that you've done will be for nothing. So Monero kind of goes about this in the way that we say, what if we made all the drivers safe by default? I wish that was a thing in real life where we can make all drivers drive sanely by default, but that doesn't work that way. But we can kind of enforce that on a protocol level with Monero, where we say, let's make sure that everybody uses a baseline, um, a sane base level of privacy, so everybody is covered in this way. Um, so kind of when we're looking towards Zcash, first of all, um, they have opt-in privacy, so uh, not many people use it, but it is theoretically more robust. So now we're going to kind of talk about zero knowledge, um, ZK Snarks versus something like Ring CT, which Monero uses. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Zcash um, uses something called ZK Snarks, which is a cool little thing that they develop for themselves. They, it, it's basically mathematical magic where they say, we can know nothing about particular something and prove it is still something. Um, Google has been doing stuff with, ZK, with zero knowledge. Zero knowledge is not just for cryptocurrencies, like what something Google has been working on, uh, which I just heard about, which I think is just mind-blowing, where you can send them a search 
but it's completely encrypted. And they get that search, and they don't know what you sent them because it's encrypted, but it's, it's encrypted in zero knowledge. And then they are able to get the results and send those results back to you. And they still have no idea what you sent them. And it was all done in zero knowledge, so then you get that. It's absolutely insane. It's math magic, basically. It's kind of wizardry. I don't even think it's real. But it's this idea that you can prove something about something without knowing anything about it. So Zcash has this thing where they can prove in very mathematical, cool, mathematically clever and cool ways uh, certain things about a transaction to show that Monero, um, not Monero, sorry, um, coin is not created or destroyed to show that um, everything adds up and everything is kosher and it's not breaking anything of the protocol. Very nifty, very, very cool. Okay, But the issue that a lot of the Monero people take with Zcash is that it requires a trusted setup. It requires, uh, in order to get this magic to work, you have to have a wizard at some point. Wave a magic wand and say a magic thing. And if this wizard waving this wand and saying this thing remembers what he said and how he said it, then all of a sudden he's going to be able to do some pretty crazy things. He's going to be able to print infinite Zcash, and he would be able to theoretically crack some of the privacy of Zcash. Maybe not all of it, but the privacy would weaken because of certain attacks that he could do. In this case, this wizard is not a, a, a funny image. This wizard is a certain number. In order to set up this whole Zcash thing, the trusted setup requires a number. And they try to mitigate this risk by saying, OK, what if we have five different people generate the number so that way no one person can know that number at any given time? What if, you know, um, and if even one of these five people is honest and destroys it, destroys his portion of the number, then we never can assemble the full number again and nobody would ever know. And you know, they're trying to make that even more robust by saying, what if it's not five people, what if it's 70 people? And still, just one person needs to be honest. So Zcash is very, very strong in terms of trusted privacy. There is some element of trust at, at some point, there is some element of trust required for this privacy to work. Monero, um, conversely, uses Ring CT, um, and we have a wonderful, wonderful book called Mastering Monero, which you can look at. It, there's a free PDF that you can download. Um, there's also physical copies if you prefer those to order, uh, masteringmonero.com. And it takes you through a lot of the technologies that Monero use and a lot of great analogies and how it works. So Monero doesn't just use Ring CT. It uses something called stealth addresses and Ring CT and Ring signatures and all those kind of work together to create a what we consider and what we hope is a robust way of doing privacy. Um, uh, I kind of lost my train of thought. Sorry, Zcash. Okay. Um, so Monero does things in, in this way, uh, different from Zcash in that uh, Monero, it's a, it's a common misconception that Monero doesn't use any sort of zero knowledge. Remember, zero knowledge proofs just mean that you can prove a certain thing about a statement without revealing something. So as an example, a ring signature is a form of zero knowledge proof. Because a ring signature can say, um, we don't know who the sender is. And how do we obfuscate the sender? By saying it could be one of many possible senders. But we can prove that it was indeed one of these senders without knowing exactly which sender it was. And in that way, we try to obfuscate who the sender actually is. So um, really, does that kind of answer your question? Yeah? OK, how much time have I burned? Remember, 30 minutes. We're at 5.18, and they're still not ready. But we're, we're, closer, we're closer than ever before. Does anybody else have a question, a Monero-related question, a CDC-related question to me? Because if not, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to start telling bad jokes. And n nobody wants to hear my jokes. Ten-minute break, he says. OK, so great. Um, I, I can get off this stage. Thank you guys so much for, for listening to me ramble. We're going to take a ten-minute break. Um, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to start introducing um, we're going to start introducing all of the other assemblies in our cluster, and we've got a lot of them. So stick around. We've got some good stuff coming up, and I'll see you guys around. <laughs>